Software Inc. is an incredibly complex game which can be easy to get lost or overlook some features. So I've compiled this list of tips and tricks to help you navigate the game and be successful straight from the start. So when starting out, it can be pretty tempting just to dive straight into making your first piece of software, but if you do that, good chance you'll end up going bankrupt pretty quickly. So what you'll want to do instead to make a bit of cash early on is contract work. And if you've never done it, just come down here to the bottom left corner of the screen and click the paper icon. It brings up this menu that shows a bunch of different contracts you can do. And well, how you want to choose them is if you have if your character has solid programming and design skill, then I recommend choosing logistic application or embedded system. If your character has a good artistry skill, you can also choose game assets. And you just look at one that looks good to you, and then you have a couple choices. Uh, when it comes to the teams, just select core or whatever team your character is on. And for lead designer, I'd actually recommend leaving it as none, because if you end up doing that, you'll drain your character's inspiration, and for contract work, it's just not worth it. Um, other, another choice you have is SCM, and starting out, you probably won't have an SCM server, which what it is, it's just a server that helps speed up development. If you don't have it, it's nothing to worry about. So, other than that, you just click accept the work, and you're character starts to go to town on it and for doing these you just need to do the bare minimum amount of work so basically just one iteration and the minimum amount of code so we'll click promote you don't even need to fix any bugs for the first couple contracts and bam just like that you've made twelve thousand dollars so we'll go ahead and load up a couple of contracts and you can have a couple of these going at once too so we'll do like three of them maybe Accept the work. We'll speed it up a bit. You'll just want to let them go through one iteration. Later on, as you start to build up your reputation, you'll get contracts that require a bit more effort to get the full amount of money. So you might have to put in more than one iteration or do uh, a bit more coding. But for these first couple contracts, you can just do the bare minimum. Just go straight to that. Yep, promote that. Click finish. Click finish. We probably could have gotten another contract in, but as you see, we've already made $50,000. Could have even made more. So, early on, this is a great way to make a bunch of cash. It's almost a bit unrealistic how much you can make doing contract work, but. When hiring new employees, there's a couple good tips to know about. So for starters, if you're hiring anyone on the development side, I'd highly recommend you pick up a similar role as a secondary. So for a designer, you might pick programmer or artist. And then another thing to know is you should use all the filters, even though it's going to be a bit expensive starting out, it will be well worth it in the long run. For starters, compatibility is probably the most important one. If you don't choose this, then your employees will be asking for bigger raises, they might file complaints, want to leave your company, it will cause a lot of issues down the road. Um, of course, filtering by specialization is important. You want the people that you hire to specialize in what you hired them for, so that's important to choose. And filtering by trait. There's a couple different traits you can filter by, but the most important one is to not pick stress. If you right click on it, you can filter it out. And just if you have a stressed out employee, they'll constantly uh, get too stressed out to finish working through the day. They'll be filing complaints, asking for huge raises. It's just a, it'll just be a giant headache. You do not want an employee with stressed out. It's the it's the worst trait by far. And some other good ones, I like to pick up modest get cheaper employees as well as I like to filter out forgetful just because it can cause a uh, game or software to be uh, not so great so during your first couple playthroughs it might be tempting you straight towards designing a computer or a video game but one thing you'd probably realize pretty quickly is that 
these kind of software have a bunch of different specializations like system, 2D, audio. And with when you start adding features to bump up this expected interest, even with a framework, it might take four to eight years to get a hundred percent interest, which is just way too long. So what you want to do instead is choose one of three software, either a 2D editor, audio tool, or antivirus. Personally, I normally go with a 2D editor, but each of these only have about two software types. And with a framework, you can usually release one of these in about a year or two, which is way quicker than other software types. It's a great way to make a lot of cash with your first release. A good tip to know when designing your first piece of software is to come down here to this publisher button. You're presented with a couple options, but only one of them is really worth your time, and it's this marketing button. By doing this, the publisher will handle all your marketing pre-release and for a few years after your release. And all you have to do is release it by a certain date and they'll take usually around a 10 to 15% royalty. And th the thing about this is the publisher will always do a way better job than you can as a player doing the marketing. So it's a definite must for first few software releases. Okay, so my next tip is about when you're moving from one office to another. Whenever you do this, it's crucial that you store your furniture before you do this because Software Inc, if you just move from one office to another without doing that, you completely lose your furniture, which means uh, thousands of dollars wasted that you can't get back in. If there's any awards that you're sentimental about, you'll also lose those. So you want to make sure to store your furniture first. So if you only have one room, you can just right click on the room and do select furniture. Or if you have multiple rooms, your current building, you can just do select entire building and then right click again and do select furniture types and select your rooms. And thus you have all the furniture selected. You just go to this little red icon here, put furniture in inventory, bam, it's all stored. And now if we go to move to new office, just pause the game and click move company we'll go to whatever this apartment building is I'll quickly load and then now if we go to our build mode we still have all our items we can place it and we didn't just have to waste a bunch of money so a very good tip to know Okay, so we're here in our little test office. I'm going to show you guys some neat little tricks you can use to have a more enjoyable building experience. Uh, for starters, if you didn't know, when you right click on an object, you can click this little green button here and it selects all the furniture type in a room. This can allow you to do a variety of things. You can change all the colors at once, duplicate them all, move them, store them. But some lesser known features is Let's say you want to replace uh, some sort of furniture in your room. Uh, this is especially useful with like computers and stuff. So let's right click on that, select them all. And let's say there's some newer computer that we want to replace. So you know, we got the 80s computer, let's, let's replace it to the 90s. Well, you can just click here, click OK, and then it will automatically place them all. It saves a huge amount of time. You don't have to go manually placing them one by one. Super helpful. Um, another use of this is if you come over here to your servers, traditionally you might use this wired mode and you, you know click on them, drag it to one by one, but whenever you have like hundreds of servers, that can be super time consuming. So uh, Nice little trick is you can just right click on one of the servers and then do select all furniture in the room and then right click again and hit this little orange connect servers button. If we look at it, bam, all the servers are connected. It saves a huge amount of times when you got your huge server rooms. But uh, another trick to know is uh, whenever you're messing with the color of you know, an object, like let's say I want to turn this desk orange well let's say I want to do that for multiple desks in, across my building I can just save the style here and now 
if for some reason I want to change all my desks to be orange I can just do that now and I don't have to keep manually rechanging the color so there's a trick uh, one more thing is this little um, circular tool over here has a variety of uses for starters it you can change the grid size or change the angle snap um, and by doing this you can have a more accurate placement of your items so I can <laughs> rotate them and whatnot and then if you come down here you can reset the grid but another thing is like let's say we want to have all our furniture be angled along a certain wall well you can just bring your little circular bar over and then now you can have the grid be along that wall so nice nice trick to you know it can be tricky to know when and how many iterations to do in order to design a great or outstanding quality software but for starters you'll want to initially do three iterations you'll know this is completed when during the design phase your software starts turning a pinkish color and starts turning yellow once this happens, you'll want to push into alpha, and then around the halfway point, you'll want to hit the review button. And once the reviews are done, you'll want to hit reiterate. When you do this, it will cause the amount of code and art completed thus far to decrease slightly, but if you do everything else correctly during the alpha and beta phase, your software will be guaranteed to release as outstanding quality, which can be quite a helpful thing to know how to do. Okay, so we're here in the test office. As you can see, we have a really ambitious founder. He said he's going to try to release a bunch of different software all at once. Which I wouldn't recommend, by the way. But our guy's a legend. He's going to attempt it. But as you can see, our tabs are quite messy. And as you progress the game, you'll probably encounter the same issue where you have a ton of different projects going on. A bunch of different tasks for each. And it gets a bit disorderly. So... I'm going to give a couple quality of life tips that you can use to have a better experience. So for starters, if you didn't know, you can right click on a tab and it minimizes it. So I like to do this for support tickets or marketing tasks. That way it frees up some space. But another couple buttons that you can use is the group and filter buttons. So for starters, you can click on the filter button and you can sort by the different type of task going on. So I wanted to only see my support task it now filters by that which would be pretty helpful if you're looking for something specific um, you can also filter by other stuff such as teams so how you use this is if you have multiple teams you click on here and then you click whatever room the team's in and it tells you what tasks are working on at that moment which can be pretty useful but another really helpful feature that is pretty new is this group tool, which you can either sort by the type of project that's going on or the actual projects. So for starters, if we click on type, source by the different task. So I can see, if I look at marketing, oh, we have a marketing task for project four and project product name, very creative name there. but. From here we can pause, unpause, uh, for some of them we can release the task or if it has more than that we can click this little drop down and it allows us to assign, market, review, whatnot. We can also cancel or change the priority which can be pretty nice or we can also sort by the different types of projects. So if I want to look at specifically what's my test for project one, it sorts them all here so I can see we we're in the beta, we're also doing some marketing tasks, so just some neat little ways to improve your quality of life. Okay, my next tip is about HR management. If you've never used it, it helps eliminate a lot of micromanaging you might have to do. So just to get there, you go to manage teams and then you click on this HR management button. And then for the team that you have selected, it brings up a bunch of nice tools you can use uh, basically have your leader handle some of these duties that you might have otherwise done yourself so you start with setting the budget for the team and then from there you can have your leader handle the wages or complaints which is personally my favorite part of HR management because sometimes it'll just be a random month and then you'll get 50 wage uh, 
requests asking for a raise and it can take quite a long time to sort through all those and when you have hundreds of employees it can get insanely repetitive so a great um, part of HR management is that and then there's other stuff you can do like have your leader handle the education so if you don't like doing that you basically just tell it how much you want your employees to be educated uh, for how long and then it will basically do the education for you and if you have a three-star leader in HR management then you can have them handle the hiring for you so you basically tell you how many people you want on the team for each area and what specializations what traits you might want or not want and the salary for it and basically it will go through and they'll hire new employees for you which which can be quite helpful but if if you want to do that basically all you need is a leader that has at least one skill in HR management so if we go to this guy we go to his leadership skill we see HR he has one skill so if you want some of the later stuff you'll need to have someone with a bit more education in HR so if you get two stars you can do education three stars higher so a good tool to know about okay so my next tip which is more like two tips put into one is about when uh, employees or I should say teams come into work so for starters it might be worth having your teams work different shifts so if you look at my support team I have them my day shift come in at 8 till 16 and then my night shift come into 18 till 02 and all you have to do to change the times just go down to the bottom and change the numbers on arrivals and departures and if you really want to you could have about three sh different shifts work out of the same office during a day and this is something you should definitely consider doing for your more service oriented teams such as you know, marketing support that way you know, for support the tickets don't build up too much or marketing you can have people hyping around the clock plus you just get the benefit of since all your teams work out of the same office, you save a lot of money on rent or the cost building the uh, office space. So good thing to know. And then another tip is you want to consider the vacation range of your team. So it's good to have all your teams work at different or all your teams go on vacation at different times, but you especially want your service teams going on vacation at different times. So if you look at my my team they go on vacation from March to April while my support team goes on vacation from uh, July to August that way you know one support team goes on vacation there isn't a sudden amount of buildup of my tickets because I still have another team working on it so good stuff to consider um, also another little bonus tip is when starting out where you just have your founders you know you don't have any employees yet it might be worth increasing the amount of time your team works and all you have to do is just click this plus sign at the end because normally employees you know they don't like working long hours but your your founders they don't really get a huge uh, they, they they'll be less effective but you won't get a complaint from them but they won't quit the company because you made them work longer so it's a trick to get more hours out of your founders early in the game that concludes my 10 tips and tricks if there's any tips you guys think i left out please let me know i love to hear them i may end up making a follow-up video or perhaps some guides on specific areas of your game so let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in otherwise if you found the video helpful consider liking subscribing I would greatly appreciate it. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next video.